So, uh, welcome back for part three of discrete math, talking about truth tables. Uh, so, in the last couple of videos, uh, we went over the basic gates, uh, the knots, and the then statements, and so forth. Um, and then we also went over the order of operations when we're putting together statements. So now we're going to talk about seeing if a statement or multiple statements are true. So. These, this is a logic type scenario. So uh, we have what are called the premises up here, which are statements that if these are true, then this on that statement has to be true in order for this uh, entire statement to be true. So these are premises, and I'll go into this um, in this example to explain that further. This symbol here means therefore. So this is the like final statement that we're talking about. So if we're looking at this example here, again I set up the, all the basic combinations of P and Q. Let me draw some lines so we don't get any confusion. So here's a basic truth table. And so let's go ahead and fill in these two from previous knowledge. So these are the opposites of the statements. So false and false, true, true, false, true, false, uh, true. So for this to be true, we have to look at what are called the critical rows. And what a critical row is, is that if all of the statements are true, and then that's a critical row. So in this first one, these are both false. So these are false, so we don't really care about that. That's not a critical row. This one uh, is also not a critical row because one of them is false. This one's also false. So th these are not critical rows. But this last one here is a critical row. So that means that this statement here, whatever we get, has to be true in order for this example to be true. So let's go ahead and fill this in so we know uh, P then Q. So the idea is, is that if P is true, then Q has to be true. So the first one's true. Oh, sorry. True, not false. The next one down is P is true, but Q is false. So this is false. And the last two are true. P can be true, uh, false, and P, uh, P can be false and true. P, P can be false and Q can be true. And the last one, they can both be false, so that's true. So what we have to do is now check to see if this is true for the critical row. And in this case, it is. So we only really have to check for this critical row. So this statement saying that if P is uh, not P, not Q, or the tr uh, premises for this, then P, then Q. So this is an example of one type of statement that is true. Now let me um, suggest what this means. Um, we can convert this into language um, for sentences examples. So these are all symbols, but we, this is all math. I haven't really been, uh, made this true for anything. But let's say um, we want to uh, start talking about sentences. So let's give an idea of a statement. So a statement can be, um, I'm going to write this as uh, wording, uh, I'm not really finding a correct way to say this, but this is then. P then Q. So this is the same as P then Q. Um, and this can be any sort of thing that we're talking about. So if, um, if we're talking about something like this, and let's say P, let's say P is equal to a word cat or something like that. And Q is equal to, I don't know, let's say dog. Something, something along those lines. And then not P is the same as not a cat. And not Q is equal to not a dog. So P then Q means that if the statement is, if P is a cat, 
and then Q to the blog. Some type of statement like that. Now, this is not a very good one. Um, I should really, in the next video, I'll see if I can find some better examples of these types of problems. But this is a quick overview of what I mean. So if, if these two premises are true, not a dog, not a cat, then cat and dog or something like that. Um, in the next video, I'll see if I can find um, a good example from a textbook explaining this in further detail about how we can use these types of statements. But for this purpose of this video, I wanted to go over uh, critical rows. So this is a critical row. And uh, when you're looking at these, uh, there might be more than one row to check. There could be as many as three or four, depending on how many variables and how many of these premises you're looking at. Um, and the more premises that you have, the less rows that you should have. I'm not sure if that's entirely true, but it's an idea. Um, so as long as there are two true statements, or at least since there's only two premises, all the premises, um, if all the premises are true, then the conclusion has to be true in order for this to be true. So that's uh, the basics of a critical row in checking to see if a given statement is true. And in this statement, we check to see if uh, not P, not Q, therefore P, then Q. So thank you and join me for the next one.